So yeah, or you know, I was done with DuckTales. So yeah, you don't really have the core mechanic to define the game, but nevertheless, this is a really well done uh, t standard 2D platformer. Uh, nothing to set it apart mechanically, but uh, the, yeah, graphics are really good, and the, the level design is actually quite uh, good. And yeah, there's some fairly creative stuff here, I think, that they did. A lot, like a decent bit of variety, especially if you consider... Or I guess I wouldn't really say not so much the time that the game was released in since... What was the cop? I can't remember. It was, I think it was this game was released in 93, it said on the title screen. And yeah, by that time we were already like deep into the 16-bit era. So uh, actually, yeah, this game, it, uh, I, I never thought of it that way. But yeah, if you think of this game as being like contemporary, contemporaneous, is that a word? Whatever, if you consider that this game was released alongside like, you know, other 16-bit games that were released in the early 90s, yeah, this game does kind of suck, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you know, in the context of, like, if you compare this to, on the other hand, like, Nintendo games and, like, a lot of NES, like, bog-standard NES platformers from back in the day, um, it's, uh, really impressive. Although, with that said, uh, here we've got a water level. So, um, uh, yeah, this is happening right now, and, uh, bit of a shame. Water levels... Pretty much uni universally robot, almost universally ro Really? I can't kick that. I guess it has to be even footing. Betcha there's nothing useful in there. I bet it's like a chicken. Okay, it's money. Better than a chicken in this case, actually, since... I guess I care about points for some reason and I'm at full health. Oh, wow. Wow, that was nasty. But on the other hand, I got a 1-up for it. So, uh, yeah, anyways, water levels. Pretty much universally... It's, I'm always, personally, I'm kind of interested often to see how games handle, like, underwater levels. Because there, there's a lot of different ways you can do water levels in this game, or in video games. And, whoa! You know, I don't think that this was in the Game Gear version of the game. I think this is new. Yeah, I do, I do not remember Torpedo Sardines being in the Game Gear version. Which, like I said, I did just play the other day in preparation for this LP. Maybe I was mistaken, but I don't, maybe there's actually, like, differences between this game, between the mass, like, significant differences between the Master System and the Game Gear versions of this game. That'd be kind of interesting to see. I hadn't considered that. I had basically just assumed that this was a straight port, like most of the other Game Gear, or Master System Game Gear ports. I had heard of, but uh, anyways, water levels. Uh, a lot of different ways that video games do them, and it's kind of interesting, I think, to see the different ways that video games handle water levels, and particularly the different ways that all of those different ways seem to fail in, like, every single type of video game out there. Like, you've got your Sonic games, where it's, like, underwater is basically the same, except slowed down to, like, less than half speed, which is awful. Pretty much, for some reason, the biggest problem with most underwater levels in video games tends to come down to the speed. It's like, for some reason, they just, just like, yeah, video games decide that underwater means everything has to be, like, super slow. And I don't know why that is. Like, like if any of you out there are, like, swimmers and, like, understand how to swim, it's like, you can, you can swim pretty fast. Like, if you're underwater, like, if you have any sort of training at all and, like, you know, swimming... It's like, yeah, you can swim fast. It isn't just like... Like, in fact, some people can, like, swim faster than they can, like, run, even. That, that, that was actually me. I'm, like, a really terrible runner, but I used... Or at least back in the day, I was a good swimmer, but a terrible runner. I could, like, literally swim faster than I could run. Donald, not so much. Or I don't know, maybe he is... Actually, yeah, it does... Actually, now that I think of it, it looks like Donald can actually swim a bit faster. And then it's normal walking speed. I don't know. Regardless, um, there's there's really even less interest. Somehow, like the the underwater levels in this game are like even, or I say levels. This is the only underwater level in this game. But it's uh, somehow even less mechanically interesting than like the the base mechanics of the game. It's like it's like yeah, basically you've still got the the box kicking element, but you lose the jumping. Yeah, you lose the jumping aspect and replace it with this just weird freeform swimming stuff, which means, yeah, you can't jump on enemies' heads anymore, and that's like... I mean, like, in, in, a, in a 2D platformer, this generic, that's like half the game. That's like, half the game is basically just jumping on enemies' heads to kill them, and you, you take that out, and what are you left with, really? You're left with an underwater level, 
that, you know, yeah, I'm convinced that it's, I mean, there's, you've got the occasional slowdown, but no, I am convinced that this moves somewhat more slowly than the uh, regular levels in this game, but that's fine. Uh, it's very short, at least. All the levels in this game are very short, and I think we're almost to the end of this underwater segment. But, uh, yeah, what does one even talk about in an LP when you're in an underwater segment, other than, like, how underwater segments in video games are almost always terrible, and then going on to explain the different ways that this particular underwater segment in uh, this video game is terrible. I am racking up a lot of lives so far. I actually died a few times in my uh, playthrough of the Game Gear version of this game, so I, I never actually got above nine lives. I'm, I'm curious to see if they actually make use of that first zero digit. That was something that always made me really angry about Mega Man games. It's like the you you had the you had the two digits for the life counter, or the lives counter in Mega Man games. Oh, it's Shark Attack! Oh, that this this boss was a huge pain on the Game Gear. Actually, this might have been the worst one as far as uh, just unfair fair screen space messing up your reaction time. Although, actually, I'm pretty sure that the sh that shark is moved up a bit further here um, in this version of the game. Like, in the Game Gear version, you could just, like, barely see the tip of his nose poking up at the bottom on the Game Gear version, and then, yeah, occasionally he goes snapping up. Whoa! Oh, no, no, no. Okay, that was close. Oh, I've only got one hit left, too. So, yeah, actually, I think in the end I don't... Yeah, because he's, like, sort of moved up a bit farther, I don't actually think I have that much more space to work with than I did on the Game Gear, so maybe this boss fight just sucks regardless of the version of the game you're playing. And yeah, you've also got, yeah, your reduced movement speed because you're underwater, so yeah, it's just... Oh, this boss sucks. Man, and yeah, yeah, with that being, that being said, I really hope... Okay, here we are at the end, that's good. I was really hoping I wouldn't have to redo that. And then, okay, this, this is kind of gruesome. Like, just look at this. Yeah, and he's got his teeth on the hook, and then it pulls out all of his teeth. Like, from the front. Probably include including his gums, probably. Like, look how the teeth are all together. That's like, rips out all of his gut, like, everything. His whole mouth. Out of there. That just looks extremely painful. That's like, I don't know. Really gruesome for a kid's game. I would like, I would hate to be that shark. That's just like, ugh. Makes me feel bad just looking at it. It's like animal cruelty right there. <laughs> 